and hello, and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Kirk Grant from ERM. Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on-demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a beat. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity. And this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there, and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today we are joined by Kirk Grant, a senior consultant for data and virtual and visualization at ERM. And normally this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Kirk, hello and welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Okay, so you're the senior consultant, data analytics and visualization at ERM. So tell me what type of business is ERM? So ERM is uh, one of the world's largest uh, pure play sustainability consultancies. Uh, we have about 8,000 plus employees globally across about 40 countries and territories working in roughly, I think, about 160 offices. So we essentially help clients reach their sustainability goals and our clients span across various industries, uh, included but not limited to technology, uh, energy, and healthcare. Just to name a few. Wow. So a, a very hot topic in, in today's world. And I, I'm sure with all the the laws coming down, um, it keeps you guys very busy. Yes. Uh, it's a hot topic for a lot of people in many different um, areas. Um, you know, ESG is a big one. Um, technology is a big one as well. And uh, data has been a huge one for very, very um, massive players in the industry. Um, so you're right. It's pretty big. So then tell me, what do you do for ERM? What's your typical work week look like? So my work week actually changes. I would say no week is the same for me. Um, so I did mention before, you know, we have roughly about 160 offices, um, um, and we're global. So sometimes I work on clients, uh, I work with clients that are locally in North America, whether that may be the East coast, the West coast, Midwest, uh, sometimes I work with clients that are in Canada, uh, both on East coast side and the West coast side. And sometimes I work with folks that are in, um, Australia and Asia. So it kind of just varies depending on uh, the week and the work I'm doing. Um, but for me at ERM, I, I work with the data analytics and visualization team, which is mm -hmm. usually a big mouthful. So we call it DAV team to kind of shorten things out a little bit. Um, okay. And I essentially help clients integrate their data analytics into their business practices. Uh, that's data collection, management, and advanced analytics to help them understand key trends and efforts to diagnose the root problem or, or cause of some issues that they may have and help them um, with some corrections and derive some effective uh, insights for them. And like an example of how you of that data is used? An example of how the data is used? Mm -hmm. um, well, we have various types. Uh, I did mention that we're one of the largest companies in the, in the globe that does sustainability. So we have folks that do like air compliance work. Uh, so some of that data that they collect, they'll use that and it'll help them with the company's reporting. Um, mm -hmm. Or it may be a case where um, some type of like compliance aspect to it. So we use data in that capacity. So we basically help the client know whether or not they're going to meet their their goals for their um, reporting periods. Very nice. So, Kurt, tell me, is this what you dreamed of? Was this the dream when you were little? <laughs> say you're six years old, you know, did you say, I'm going to grow up and be a senior consultant in, in data analytics and visualization? <laughs> no, no. What was the dream? This, this is really far away from what I ever thought I was going to do. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was the what was the initial dream? What did you want to be when you grew up? So I would say that um, for me, probably one of the biggest things uh, that I wanted to do up until I would say four years ago, actually, was uh, be a civil engineer. Um, I grew up in Barbados. It's a small country yeah. in the Caribbean. Uh, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be a civil engineer all my life, right down to like mapping out like the timelines and the college I want to go to and all these different things. Uh, so I had all that kind of down packed and planned and I didn't go to college with civil engineering. I did do it. I went to Virginia Tech, uh, graduate with a civil engineering degree. Uh, but back when I was younger, you know, my dad owns a small construction company. So we spent a lot of time talking about engineering, talking about construction design, helping him with like some of the things he's doing. So I've been around it my whole life and that's kind of like where I was envisioning my path to go. Uh, what was funny is all of my friends work in IT. Every single one, every, all of my friends from college back home, they all studied IT and I was the only one that did engineering. And we used to have these conversations almost every other week where they would tell me, hey, I think you should, you should consider IT. You do really well in it, like just the way like you think about things and how you analyze stuff and you're able to like, break things down into like small, small things or small tasks, you'd be a pretty good person for like this type of industry. Have you ever considered it? Um, and I kept saying, no, nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so uh, 10 years later, you know, flash forward to being, being here in America, graduated working in the uh, civil engineering industry. We got back to having these conversations and several years later decided to make the transition into data analytics. And honestly, I'll say I'm very happy with the decision I made. Well, let's talk about that journey a little bit. So you graduated from college, then where did you go from there? What was the, the first job out of college? Uh, so I graduated from college back in Barbados uh, with my associate's degree, came up to America and I worked for a civil engineering company. I did. Geophysical studies, uh, so a lot of a lot of that for about two years. Then I went to college um, at Virginia Tech. Same company actually hired me again, um, and I did project management for them, engineering project management. Uh, did that for about a year, year and a half, two years, and I transitioned over to ERM where I did environmental uh, consultant work. So a lot of remediation design a lot of engineering design related to just environmental impacted uh, sites, typically oil and gas clients and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, coming over to being in that industry for a few years, I started asking questions about like, what do we do with uh, our reporting? What do we do with the data? Like, you know, general questions that, you know, you typically don't ever ask when you're working in civil engineering is usually very cut and dry. Hey, we have a site. Hey, we have this. Let's work on the design. Okay, great. It's been approved. We have the, bu we have the budget. We've done all of our uh, risk assessments, all these things. And now we're getting to the point of like the permitting and construction. And, you know, when the construction is done, you're done. Next project, you know. So it was definitely a, not the most linear transition. <laughs> I don't think it ever is. No, not from what I've heard from anyone. <laughs> so, well, that's exciting. So you were basically started getting curious about the data. And yep. then how did, how did you take that curiosity and transition it into the job? You decided, yeah. Well, ERM is a pretty large company and we do all types of things. Um, if I sat here and told you everything we did, we'd probably be here for about an hour or so. Uh, but I, you know, I met some folks at ERM that work in data and we started having some conversations about like, what do you do as a person? What is data management? What is data analytics? What is visualization? And it piqued my curiosity because at the time when we were talking about this, uh, I used to, um, I did coding in college as electives, but I never actually used it. So I still like tried to keep up with like some, some type of skills just 
just because I felt like, hey, you know, it's something I needed. Maybe I use it, maybe I don't. Um, so we started talking and going down that path of learning about what they did, it definitely piqued my curiosity a lot more. And actually, ever since that started, I've done a lot more in data than I ever anticipated um, here. Yeah. And tell people what I do, and they just, they sit back and say, oh, wow, like, that's a lot. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. I, I love that, that story. And, uh, and, you know, and it is a, a common thread, I think that I found with a lot of people getting who get into data, it's just that curiosity and the discovery of uh, passion for it. So what is it that you find passionate that you that what was the part you found, uh, you were passionate about that, that drove you and, and just made you just switch that, uh, that career momentum? To be honest, the, the reason isn't necessarily as happy as what a lot of people may say. Um, so COVID put a lot of things in perspective for me. It, it put a lot. Um, a lot of people globally lost their life through, through COVID. A lot of people have suffered through it and, you know, lasting effects and things of that nature. I have family members who lost close friends through COVID and stuff and folks that I knew growing up. Uh, mm -hmm. So... Civil engineering, when you work in that type of space, there's a component of it that's, you know, you have to be on a site, speaking to people, being there in person, and usually working with large groups of people in close proximities. And yeah. I realized at that point that, you know, life isn't as long as I like it to be. <laughs> mm. So mm -hmm. uh, I felt like that was the time where I was ever going to give this a shot now is going to be the time mm -hmm. and I made the decision to do it when I had that like realization of life and I was fortunate enough that you know ERM has so many different things that we do so many opportunities and um, I transitioned from being an engineer consultant into a data analytics and visualization consultant here um, and a little bit of backstory for me I joined ERM at the end of 2020, uh, January. So I joined like right before COVID. Oh yeah. So it was, you know, all types of crazy things going on in the world at that point. And, yeah. you know, it's, it was kind of a whirlwind of a situation just to see like how everything was playing out globally and in the country and everywhere else. Because while it was going yeah. on, I, I still have friends and family that live back home in the Caribbean and other places in the world. And you're just seeing these things just, play out so you're you know you're going through all these emotions in your mind like hey you know this could happen to me you know yeah yeah well thank you for for sharing that that story yeah it's a definitely a good motivator yeah yeah um i tell people life is short it is it is indeed so so tell me then, you know, as you've uh, followed uh, your passion for engineering, finding this new passion with data, you know, what's been your biggest lesson so far in your career? You don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. That's been a common statement in most people that work in data. And the one thing I'll say, the biggest lesson for me is don't let that stop you from pursuing things, especially when you're young and able to try different things. I find mm -hmm. that a lot of us, you know, we're faced with a lot of like uncertainty in life, you know, student loan debt crisis and all types of other issues that folks of our generation have to face. Um, so there's, there's, there's an aspect that people are scared to like make, make a change if they want to, right? Um, so I'd say my biggest lesson, biggest career lesson is I'm here. I've been contemplating this choice for like six years. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I made the decision, you know, four years, four years um, into it. Um, and I'm not upset with the decision, but even if I was, I, I at least tried it and I can say I tried it. Um, so that's what I'll tell people. Oh, I love it. Um, so 
now that you are uh, immersed in data uh, and analytics, what's your definition of data? It's probably the simplest definition that people know. Data is information. It's facts, numbers, context, things that we use to analyze and make decisions. I mean, how I work with it, I, I work with and I manage high volume data. Uh, so that's typically data that's 250,000 records, 500,000 records, a million records, things that you know you typically collect every minute, every five minutes, 10 minutes, stuff like that. And I help stakeholders both internally and externally make sense of that. Do you find that translation challenging? Like what's been your best advice for for helping people to understand that, the data that they're seeing? Uh, I haven't really had much of a problem with that, um, particularly because people have always said that engineers have one or two personalities. They're either extreme extroverts or they're extreme introverts. I'm an extreme extrovert. So I've, I've always been like an over communicator. I've always been someone that but will have a conversation with someone. I'll try to help them understand. I'll teach them some things. I'll ask them some questions and we'll kind of go down this, this, this conversation path of, Hey, so what did you learn? You know, did you like this? Did you not like, is it fun for you? Is it not like, so I've never really had that case of, um, that being a, a, a pain point for me quite yet. Cause mm -hmm. most stakeholders I've interacted with, they're aware of what they have. They just may not be aware of the depth of it. That's usually like a pretty good explanation or a pretty good target. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launch pad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. So, um, you know, working in a field that deals with so much data, you know, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Um, you know, three years ago, I would have said, I don't know, because I don't, I don't know anything with data management. <laughs> but uh, I'll say this. Um, yes. Even more now than ever, especially with AI and mm -hmm. how AI has been on the forefront of everyone's mind, businesses, how they use it, how they implement it, how they collect data. Like everyone's trying to make sense of things. All businesses are looking at how they're collecting data. You know, mm -hmm. you're you're getting that be the the biggest thing that everyone is thinking about at this point. Um, and, you know, with that, it comes down to data management. How do you manage that? What do you do with it? Data security, governance, quality of it, you know, which all of that I think is extremely understaffed for the vast majority of it, because you now have all these businesses, businesses that are saying, Hey, we have all this data. What do we do with it? But right. The, the employee aspect is kind of lagging behind that that driving force. And with all the legislation that's coming out and how businesses are supposed to be using their data and storing it and whatnot, I don't really see this changing for the next five, 10, possibly 15 years. I don't. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, AI, so many people are worried about AI replacing jobs but in from the data aspect uh data management aspect there's so much work that needs to go into standing that up and, and maintaining it yes yep mm -hmm. that's a big thing mm -hmm. but i mean again that, that comes down to the same conversation of trying to make sense of it most people are still in that process of trying to make sense into it 
I actually, yeah. I think I saw an article a while ago. I don't remember who published it, but I think it's about thirty percent of businesses have actually integrated AI into their into their operations, mm -hmm. which is astonishing because there's still seventy percent hasn't. And we're at this point where you look at the jobs and you see that all these jobs are coming up that aren't filled. So when you imagine doubling that number to 60% of business that have adopted it, you're basically doubling, possibly tripling the amount of uh, jobs in this particular industry, which yeah. again comes down to data management and all these other aspects. Well, that's a really good point that you bring up too, or before and saying that, you know, a lot of companies that underfunded the staff to, to manage this and to, to set these things up. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and we, we get a lot of questions from people, you know, saying, how do I convince <laughs> our executives that this is so important and we need to pay attention to the governance of the data and the, the management of the data, have a data model. Yep. That's, <laughs> a, that's always a fun conversation because some folks understand the, um, the importance of it. Some folks, mm -hmm. um, they understand it, but it's usually on the back end of their mind because the thing that really drives the funding and whatnot is usually the the data itself, not necessarily how you govern it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's it's I think it's a challenge that most businesses are facing, from what I can tell, just from reading news and talking to people and like, you know, just keeping keeping um keeping up with what's going on with just world things and companies and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and and so you know, and I, I do want to add and and ask. Um, getting into data management so recently and learning about it, how did you ramp up into data management, and how did you um uh, set yourself up for success in your new role? Hmm. Uh, I'm a very goal oriented person. Like, mm -hmm. I'm an extreme goal oriented person. Um, and I kind of touched on that like earlier when I said like, you know, my, my, my past career plans for like engineering in terms of years and timelines and whatnot. Um, so for me coming from an engineering background, especially civil engineering, where like, you know, you have to have a good foundation to build anything. If you don't have a good foundation, it's not going to work. It's not going to stay up. And, you know, we see that time and time again, where buildings collapse, bridges collapse. Mm -hmm. To me, this field is no different, you know, jumping into a place and not knowing anything or not at least being curious to, to try to learn something. Even if what you learn isn't even relative. Before I even got started, I took like, a couple of coding classes, some in like Python. I took a few classes in like cybersecurity and a few things in like um, um, project management and stuff like that for like Agile. Just enough to, you know, at least give me a starting point. Whether mm -hmm. I use all of it or not, at the time when I was doing it, it didn't really matter to me. What mattered to me is that I was, you know, immersing myself into the space. And, you know, I don't work in cybersecurity, as you know, but still having a little bit of knowledge about cybersecurity clearly is playing some type of like benefits into this conversation and other aspects, because you know, you can't have data management without thinking about what you're how you're doing to security. I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> but, you know, here we are. Uh, same thing with like some coding stuff. Like I didn't know I was gonna be doing it at the time, and here I am. But uh, I'd say for folks that are interested in getting into it, there is endless amount of information. It's out here for people to get started. Things are on YouTube. There's LinkedIn Learning, Demi courses. Uh, there are podcasts. There are folks on LinkedIn that, you know, are very, very proactive with talking to people and trying to help people navigate this stuff through like weekly newsletters and all types of things that honestly, if you're interested in starting into this space, it's a lot easier than if you were considering it like 10 years ago. 
compared to yeah. this. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. Um, and you know, I, I've said this often in this podcast and in and in many different areas that you know this community is so generous with their time and and really just loves to network and talk about data. <laughs> so don't be afraid to ask, right? So yeah. like you say, LinkedIn's a great resource for that. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many conversations I've seen on LinkedIn or just, you know, contributed to. And I walked away saying, oh, wow, I never knew that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. Oh, yeah. So cool. Uh, well, Kirk, this has been amazing. I, I love this this journey that you've had. Um, it's a very personal journey. And thank you for sharing it with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, I appreciate the time, appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak, and I hope that you know someone finds it useful. And um, if there's anything, if anybody wants to learn about ERM uh, and what uh, the company does, how would they find look that up? So you have a couple of different options. Uh, to me, the quickest way is to just go to www.erm.com, which is the company's portal's website. Uh, you can find pretty much anything there. Um, a lot of the information we talked about today, you can find there a lot. You can find a lot more information about what we do. Um, we have LinkedIn presence, a pretty hefty LinkedIn presence as well. We do uh, letters and reports pretty frequently. Um, that in itself is a completely different topic that will take up a lot of time. But my point is uh, the web page is a, is a very good place to get started. If you ever want, if anyone wants to find out anything more about what we do sustainability wise, you know, they can always reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, my name is Kirk Grant, K-I-R-K-G-R-A-N-T. It's pretty easy to find. Um, and if I don't know what, what you're looking for, I can probably find someone that does. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. Well, I love it. Thank you so much. And we'll make sure to post those links to the website, to the podcast okay. website as well. So. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. So I really appreciate it. And, and just to, for all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest in podcasts and in the latest in data management education, you can go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.